In this video, we continue to look at simplifying algebraic expressions, this time introducing terms and factors that are roots or radicals. First of all, you may remember that roots, also known as radicals, and sometimes certs. Think of things like square roots and cube roots. Also remember that these can be written as fractional powers or indices. When we add or subtract radicals, it's only possible to add and subtract similar radicals, those which differ only in their numerical coefficients. For example, we could add minus 5 root 3 and 9 root 3 because they're just multiples of the third root 3. But we can't add together 3 root 5 and 5 root 3 because the third, the radical, is different. Also note, another one of these relationships that's not equal. The square root of a plus b is not equal to the square root of a plus the square root of b. And there's an example here that you can follow through and convince yourself of that. If you like, try it with some different numbers as well. Let's get straight into it and look at simplifying the following expressions by combining like radicals or like terms. Have a go at this one yourself if you like and then come back and follow it through with me. In part A, we're asked to subtract 5 root 7 from 7 root 7. Well, we can do this because the third or the radical is root 7 and it's the same in both terms. So 7 of them minus 5 of them leaves us with 2 root 7. In part b, we've got the cube root of 6 plus 3 times the square root of 5 plus 3 times the cube root of 6. Here we have a couple of terms which are like and some which are not. We've got a cube root and a cube root. That's important first of all. And it's of the same number. So these highlighted terms are like. The term in the middle though is a square root, not a cube root. So it can't be a like term for it right out. Uh, also, it's a, a square root of a different number altogether. So to simplify this one, we have one cube root of six and three cube roots of six, giving us four altogether. And we leave the three root, three root five as it is. Part C asks us to add the square root of 20 and the square root of five. Now on the surface, these don't look like they are like radicals or like roots. Now the number inside the square root is different. But remember that the square root of 20 could also be written as the square root of four times 5, because 4 times 5 is 20, plus the square root of 5. And then we can note that this part of the expression, the square root of 4 times the square root of 5, plus the square root of 5, and now we're starting to get something which looks like like roots. The square root of 4 is 2, root 5, and root 5. Finally, we can combine those because they are like radicals. We have 3 root 5 as our final result. So sometimes you have to be a little bit careful and really check into things that you are able to just leave them as they are, or perhaps there could be some work done to simplify them. Multiplying and dividing radicals though is a little bit easier than adding and subtracting. We don't have to worry about like terms. Sometimes it's useful to recall this relationship here as well. That can help us simplify things. Also, we need to remember the, the index laws to help us multiply and divide radicals. So make sure you've, know, uh, you've seen some of those before and you know how to work with them. And that means we're often going to change our radicals or thirds to appear as fractional indices to help us use those index laws. Let's check out these examples. First of all, in part A, we've got the square root of three times the square root of five. Now really, there's nothing like, uh, nothing wrong with that. But just to show you another way to write it, we can combine that as the square root of 3 times 5, or root 15. Both are okay. In part b, we're going to use the distributive law to bust these brackets open. So we have the square root of uh, 6 times 2 root 7 minus 4 root 2, expanding to give us 2 times root 6 times root 7, take away 4 times root 2 times root 6. Now that one we can push together to give us 2 root 42, take away 4 root 12, and then just one final further simplification by noting that 12 can also be thought of as 3 times 4, so the square root of 12 is the square root of 3 times 4, and we finish up with 2 root 42, take away 
4 by 2 from the square root of 4 and our root 3 left over. In C we have the square of 6 times root 11. In this case I might use my fractional indices to make this look a bit, a bit easier in how we might use the index laws. So inside the bracket we've got 6 times 11 to the 1 half. Remember that the square root is the 1 half power. And then we've got that all raised to the power 2. I'll use my index laws to pull that 2 inside the bracket. I'll have 6 squared and 11 to the 1 half times 2. 6 squared is 36 and 11 to the 1 half times 2 or 1 is going to be just 11. Now that one you can multiply out either in your head or on your calculator and you should get something along the lines of 396. So those examples all looked at numerical values or numerical thirds and roots. Now let's have a look at some that involve variables, true algebraic quantities. First of all we're going to simplify the square root of 3x squared y multiplied by the cube root, don't miss that little 3, of 3xy cubed. As usual, maybe stop the video for a moment and have a go at this yourself to see if you can get through it. Okay, I mentioned earlier that often it's useful to get rid of that root notation, the thirds, and write them in index form so that we can use our index laws. So I'm going to do that here. I've got 3x squared y. It was a square root, so I'll write to the half. And then 3xy cubed, this time a cube root, so I write one third. Now I can use the index laws to bring the half power inside these brackets and the one third power inside these. I have 3 to the 1 half, x to the 2 times 1 half or 1, and y to the half. Then in the next part, 3 to the 1 third, x to the 1 third, and y to the 3 times 1 third, or just 1. Now we can combine the pieces that work together, 3s, the x's, and then the y's. So we have 3 to the 1 half plus 1 third. Again, we're using the index laws here. x to the 1 and 1 third, that's going to be x to the 1 plus 1 third, and y to the half plus 1. Now, depending on how comfortable you are with fractions, you can either pop off to your calculator or do this on the side on a little note. We're going to have 3 to the 5 on 6 power, x to the 4 thirds, and y to the 3 on 2. And I'm quite happy to leave it like that uh, without any other explanation given as to how I should leave the result. Those are all nice positive powers, that's fine. Part B is probably the most involved one we've done yet. We've got a fraction, so we're dividing two thirds. First of all, we've got a square root on the top, and we've got a four root on the bottom, a fourth root. Just keep that in mind when we, again, change these to index law form, or index form. On the top, we've got 4a squared, b squared, c to the 4, that's going to be to the half because it's a square root, and on the bottom we'll have a 1 on 4 power of 16, a to the 12, b to the 4, and c to the 8. Again I'll use my index laws, I'll expand the bracket out by multiplying each of the powers inside by 1 on 4, and on the top by 1 on 2. So we have 4 to the 1 on 2, a to the 2 times 1 on 2, b to the 2 times 1 on 2, c to the 4 times 1 on 2. On the bottom, 16 to the 1 on 4, a to the 12 times 1 on 4, b to the 4 times 1 on 4, and c to the 8 times 1 on 4. Now we just need to clean all of those up. For example, 4 to the half is 2, 2 times a half is 1, and so on down the line. So we should have 2, a to the 1, b to the 1, c squared, all divided by 16 to the 1 on 4th power. Convince yourself that that's also 2. 2 by 2 by 2 by 2 is 16. a to the 12 times 1 on 4 is a cubed. b to the 4 times 1 on 4 is b. And finally, c squared. Again, we can do a little bit of cancelling here. The 2's cancel. The b's cancel, c squared's cancel, and some of our a's are going to cancel. 
to leave us with an A squared on the bottom. Remember when we've cancelled absolutely everything on the top or the bottom, we're actually still left with that little hidden times 1. So a placeholder if you like. 1 over A squared for our final result. Okay, so that's it for this video. Here we've defined what we mean by similar roots and radicals, and we looked at how to add and subtract roots where that was possible. And finally, we moved on to simplifying expressions that involved multiplying and dividing roots or radicals.